Hello friends, it's Trevor, it's Avery, it's Pat, it's the Citywide Special. Kyle Lowry is finally home. The Sixers officially announced the signing of the veteran guard. Buddy Heald has impressed in his first few games in Philly, helping the Sixers to a dramatic win over the Cavs on Monday. Can the team get healthy enough to hold on to a playoff spot until Embiid returns? After winning their fourth straight game, Sean Couturier has been named the 20th captain of the Flyers. Travis Konechny and Scott Lawton will get the A's. Rasmus Ristolainen is expected to miss at least three weeks with an upper body injury, however. Tyson Forster is also sidelined but expected to return soon. With the Flyers sitting third in the Metro, will Danny Breer still be selling at the deadline? Pitchers and catchers have reported. The Phillies signed pitcher Spencer Turnbull to a one-year deal. Brandon Marsh undergoes knee surgery but is expected to be ready for opening day. Rumors swirl around Eagles pass rusher Hassan Reddick. Reports indicate the pro bowler has been granted permission to seek a trade. However, Reddick himself has denied doing so. All that more coming up right now. How's it going, fellas? Good. Chilly. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yes. Honestly, you know yeah. what I mean? Happy Hanging Valentine's out here. Day. <laughs> yeah, nothing. No, I would, there's no way I'd rather spend Valentine's Day than, than having a couple brews and talking sports with the boys. Am I right? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of many things I'd rather be doing, but uh, when you're a single man, you don't do those things, but it's all good. We what? here. And what? Trevor and I are a single man. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm H- here, H- but... Hannah, we're sorry. Yeah, it's all right. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll make up for this, but uh, other than that, doing pretty good. Cold week. Uh, nice short week with a long weekend ahead, President's Day off and all that, but uh, yeah, man, not, not too bad. I can't complain. Got to see the Super Bowl... Laid low for that. Honestly, been different about the winter. A little slightly happy that I was the same friend, but uh, yeah, man, we're feeling pretty good. Yeah, I think I feel like most of the the Philadelphia area, like the tri-state area, couldn't care less about the Mm-mm. Super Bowl. I have friends in other parts of the country that are like, "Yeah, man, I'm doing this for the Super Bowl. I'm doing this. Like, I'm going to the, my friends having this party. Like, I'm having a party." Meanwhile, everyone in Philly's like, yeah, I'm just staying home. I really could not care less about the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I'm just here for the halftime show. I'm just watching because I have some betting incentive. Waiting for Usher. Yeah. But, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. What oh. I will say is that uh, that first half was very boring. I almost turned it off. Yeah, it was looking like – it was reminding me of that uh, – what was it? The Rams-Patriots oh. Super Bowl? Yes, exactly. 59 Brutal. or 53. Uh, yeah, 53 after after the one we won. It yeah. was brutal. Uh, yeah, but then it got really good at the end there, so. Yeah, it picked up. Uh, weather's been pretty ass. This fucking groundhog doesn't know what the fuck it's talking about. Yeah, groundhog's wrong. Fuck him. Yeah, we gave him his flowers last week. But, More uh, like Pucks we, a Tony fraud. Yeah, we should have trapped his ass like me. I was saying about a couple episodes ago. Yeah, leave him up there in northeast Philly for a couple weeks. Time for a changing of the guard. Tag him up. Tra- trap him. Mm-hmm. Yo, can you eat groundhog? Uh, I think they I say mean, it's I'm- pretty fatty. It depends on what kind of. It depends on where the groundhogs from. Our groundhogs are probably tasting good, eating pears and tomatoes and figs. Puck's Tony Phil's probably eating good. Nah, that one looked like a fucking rat when they pulled it out. He ain't looking good at all. He looked all hmm. mangy. You probably want to eat the one that's the lottery mascot. Oh, that yeah. one's oh, probably Gus. Gus. Gus the groundhog. Yeah, Gus looks like he's pretty well fed. Gus is a little I'd worm. Eat, I'd dude. eat Gus for sure. But he's too. Pu- he's too well known. You would get criticized yeah. for eating Gus. Yeah, you're going to jail if yeah. you eat Gus. Yeah. You got to eat a non the a non Yeah, you a non celebrity groundhog. Mm-hmm. So, not Puxatawney Phil, not Gus, some other groundhog. Just your generic run of the mill. Yeah, your Northeast Philly groundhog. Yeah. yeah. They're eating good in the neighborhood. Yeah, the groundhogs in Fox Chase. Fox Chase is probably all right. They got yeah. Penny Pack. You got Yeah, you could, you could probably eat. Yeah. Mm. A fox chase groundhog is probably a delicacy. They get big up there. Mm-hmm. Eating everybody's tomatoes and garden shit. They, I'm telling you, I always thought about it, but obviously for better reasons, we, we chose not to. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, man, we're back. Another Sometimes week, 49. Crazy. Yeah, 49 for 50. the 49ers who took that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I know some of the haters are probably 49ers fans, right? Big time. Yeah, some of the, yeah, yeah. some of them were saying yeah. we're in yeah, our we feelings had, we and had whatnot. Chiefs haters, we had Niners haters, getting a little a little taste of everything. Which is, you know, when you start to get so popular, I guess it just happens. People just want to see your downfall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but you know. it is what it is. I mean, all in all, it was heavy a good heavy is the crown. The, yeah, the king. All in all, what is the heavy is the king? The head that wears is, the crown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how the fuck does that go? But you know what I mean? It was a 
like you said, Trevor, second half was a lot better. The first half was just like brutal. I mean, shout out Moody, who was a pretty much uh, kind of on well, skates for the, the playoffs, one. but he missed that extra point. Missed that extra little, point, which like, ended up being huge. Yeah, it come down to the end, but uh, yeah, good game. I mean, all in all, you get what you pay for. Second half was great. Vintage Mahomes coming out here and doing what he does, just looking cool as a cucumber in overtime, too. 13 seconds, let that clock keep running, and pretty much did the same play that they did against us, wide open man in the, yep. in the end zone, and yeah, called yeah. it a day. The yeah. corn dog play, they call it. Yeah. Here. How about the 49ers not knowing the, the playoff rules? <laughs> That's pretty funny. The playoff overtime man, rules. Man, they're always crying about I mean, some I guess kind of the, excuse. I guess if, if it's the players, I mean, who really cares? They're just out there doing, you know. But, yeah, it was kind of a pretty, pretty questionable not to – um, you know, defer there. Though apparently, statistically, it's more or less a 50-50 shot. It doesn't actually make a huge difference, but the conventional logic, I guess, is to Well, Shanahan was banking off second. of having the ball third. They were like, we wanted the ball third. It's like, yeah, but it's not guaranteed when you only score three. Yeah. Like, you yeah. Well, the other thing, yeah, if you're if you're planning on having the ball third, then you need to go for the touchdown. Right, right. exactly. Uh, That's the fourth thing. Fourth and four or whatever. And KC was like, we've been practicing like we've had this in the back of our minds since fucking preseason since training camp yeah, yeah. And they were gonna go for two yeah they were gonna go yeah. for two anyway so it's like you're playing to win the game not playing just to like play it safe and like hope to get a touchdown they score a touchdown then you kick a field goal call it a day like that it in a this ain't madden like it's not a you know a controlled thing and you're dealing with arguably you know one of the more clutch quarterbacks in the era of football right now with mahomes in the super bowl i mean Game's a game right there. Yeah, and I mean, it's also the last game of the season, right? So yeah. you have to just lay it all on the line. What are you, like, hoping? Yeah, I hope we get the ball third. No, you really want to get the ball yeah. second, so you just have a chance to end it. And like, France why are you de- thinking, like, I hope we get it third? Right. And San Fran's defense, kudos to them. Like, they played lights out first half. They fucking shut down KC. Same with KC's defense as well, but uh, San Fran's defense was lights out. They were phenomenal in the first half. Sucks seeing, I mean, Greenlaw going down like that was absurd, but that's mm. Big Dom out there doing his yeah, thing. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't yeah. think it sucks. Big Dom, that that Big Dom had the last Big laugh, Big Dom was dude. out there, haha, I got his bitch ass, but you Big know Dom what I mean? probably threw a banana peel on the field right in front of him. Hell yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you can't be, I don't know, man, that defense, they got torched a little bit. Not torched, but for that game, you could say torched. I mean, Kelsey was pretty irrelevant in the first half. Second half came out, you know where it's going to go, and pfft. They were giving up yards to tight ends left and right in that game. Yeah, even the backup tight end. Yeah, Noah. Yeah, Noah Gray. Noah yeah. Gray. You know, they were they were killing him that way. So Emma Holmes, pretty much. Yeah, he ran all over him. He had sixty six yards. I don't remember the last time he had that many rushing triple yards option. In any game. They couldn't do. They would do a fake run. He would just go out. It's like nobody wanted to hit him or weren't covering him. I don't know what was going down, but yeah, I mean, good, good way to end. I was happy to see him win. Shout out Andy Reid, get his third ring. So that was cool. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Jason Kelsey. At all the parties after that. Getting buck. Yeah, I seen one video of him just straight up walk into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was at the, yeah, the with the luchador mask yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So good to see him celebrate. So kudos to them. Whatever. Good Same for- friend. Still don't got a ring. Bitch ass, but D- let it be. D- Debo sitting on the sidelines crying. Yo, how about Fletch? I think I still yeah. have this oh on my God. Instagram post. Instagram post. Yeah, yeah, when Fletch went in on him. What he did said, Fletch say? I still got something you don't got. Yeah, Fletch said... P-A-D. At yeah. 19 problems, keep the eagles out your mouth, boy. <laughs> then he says, I still got some you ain't got. Yeah, I've been holding this one in, son. E-A-D, which eat a dick, obviously. <laughs> yeah, Fletch is the man, dude. That's incredible. Yeah, man. And then you got the whole little turmoil with uh, San Fran's O-line now with that. Uh, I don't know what the O-line's last, the guy's last name was. He what was happened? calling out his own teammate saying that, like, yeah, well, when you got guys that fucking don't block on the last drive, you'll lose games that way. Because they, they let Chris Jones just come straight through. I mean, oh, yeah. overtime, got right in Brock Purdy's face, which would have been a touchdown. They missed it. Um, calling out the, I don't know if it was the center or the right tackle. Um, he he said it was just because he was hung over the next day and was like, my bad, I didn't mean to be calling out my teammates that way. But then Jalen Carter also tapped in on that and said, that guy's an asshole. He's the reason oh, why. Oh, for real? Because remember when we played San Fran and they cut back when we were losing yeah. and Jalen Carter was like crying on the sideline. People were like, what the fuck? Like, why is he so upset? It's because that same old lineman talked bad about the guy that died, his buddy that passed away. Oh. To him. That's fucked. So Carter's like, yeah, this guy's been a fucking menace. Like, this Jeez. guy's not right in the head. But I feel like that's pretty close with like 
O linemen mentally, like they're just not right in the. That fucking reminds head. me of like, uh, what do you call it, Richie and Cardinal? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah like you just that you spend your whole life just getting at least a defender. You're on the attack. O lineman, you're just banging that head around left and right. So they're definitely not right. That yeah, way. that CTE starts to hit earlier and earlier, big time. And you're losing, so like you know, they did games and game, but yeah, man, that's all I got to say about the Super Bowl. Mm. I got more things to say. I think Kyle Shanahan's overrated. I think he's the Doc Rivers. Yeah, it was his three Super Bowls now where he's blown. I mean, one one is a two is a coach, one is a coordinator where he's blown at Which least the a one as the coordinator was the most egregious. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the twenty eight uh, to six Patriots yeah. Hawks. Yeah, yeah. yeah so or Falcons. So yeah, I think he's kind of the Doc Rivers in in, in some respects, not all the way. He's just, He's a better coach at a better football coach than Doc Rivers is a basketball coach. But when it comes to playoff performances, the the parallels are just they're there, right? The only weird parallel though with him is that I, I won't say that he's a bust or like a bad coach because if you look at statistically what he did in this time frame compared to early Andy Reid with the Birds, he is on track. With, he's got way better with talent, though. Mo- way better talent. But if you look at just like championship games that he's been to and Super Bowls that he's been to and lost. Obviously, he's been to more. Ah, uh, no, because Andy Reid was at. No, he was only at one. I'm um, lost. But then he took a break for 15 years, just about or 10 years, and then he started being hot again. So, if he's on track with Andy Reid, we have at least a decade of football that he should be kind of on the downturn. But then pick it back up again, like Andy Reid did. Hmm. We'll see, man. That's a comparison that people are saying right now here and there, but like I don't want to make this all about the 49ers, but I think in some respects their window is starting to close. It'll stay open for a while because they have the rookie quarter, they have the quarterback. There's a lot of the... money though on that team right now that's coming up. Right, their that's cap, what I'm saying. They, they have the rookie, they have the QB on the rookie deal, so they yeah. can they can cut some corners and they can make some things happen in positions that once Purdy's making more money, they're not going to be able to. Yeah, but like you have to figure, Trent Williams is getting older. Yep. George Kittle, we were talking about Even before Nick Bosa, we started to be recording. Honest, he caps up forty-two million, not this season, but the next season. He's going to take up and cap. Yeah, so there's that. George Kittle, we were talking about getting older. Um, you have their linebackers; those guys are going to want some more money eventually. Mm-hmm. I, I think their window is going to start to close soon. Yeah. Debo's going to Debo and Ayuk are going to want more money. McCaffrey, running backs have a short shelf life. Yep. So I don't know, man. Um. Glad that they lost. Shout out, Mom. I love you. We had a good time <laughs> texting after the game. But, uh, yeah, I think your team's window is starting to close, and it's going to be interesting the next couple of years for them, which coincides with the Eagles hopefully being able to make some moves. That's all I got. Yeah. Yep, glad Kansas City won. Won a little money, even though I could have won a lot more if it wasn't for that fucking kneel down at the end of the first <laughs> half. Ugh. Brutal, but whatever. So what do, what do we want to start with here? Do we want to keep the football talk going while we're here? We yeah, I guess what, you yeah, know. it's not much to talk about with the Eagles other than the Reddick thing. Yeah. yeah. They did sign a, um, a, linebacker, a linebacker. I saw. Oh, which, they did? Who? Yeah. Uh, Julian, what, what was his name? The guy, he's from Detroit, but I think Detroit uh, uh, waved him. Arquara or oh, it's Aquara. Like Aquara, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, Julian Aquara. I mean, he's a guy that got waved by Detroit. Yeah, so, they, I mean, they have some decent linebackers now, though. I'd be yeah, surprised I mean, if he knows. sits on the roster, though. By at the least, time the you know, it, at least like we're getting a, a head start on signing the emergency. Oh shit, we need linebackers, guys, <laughs> yeah. instead of a week before training camp. Mm-hmm. Oh, it says if he's he a defensive end. One of those dudes. Well, he could be like an outside. Yeah, linebacker. I saw him listed as outside mm-hmm. linebacker. I guess maybe you could. Do both. I don't know. This um this Reddick He's... thing, I think is uh, I feel like there's been a I don't know what who the fuck is the media person though for the Eagles. I feel like there's been of late, especially this last season, where there's just been too much controversy. What's coming out of the locker room that's just not true. Um, mm-hmm. for instance, like them say like oh reports coming out that they're letting him seek a trade because he wants to get traded. Like that's not what he that. I feel like they're just kind of uh, manipulating what they're getting at from a information perspective. But this reminds me a little bit of like the Fletcher Cox thing or people like that last year where mm-hmm. you let them test the market out if they want to. We still have him for the year. If we get a perfect opportunity to move him for a great piece, then you do it. If for some reason Carolina's like, yeah, we'll give you Brian Burns and it, and whatever, you do it just to get a younger player in the same position who produces about the same anyway. Yeah. Um, 
But if you're not going to get a good value for it, you're still going to have him on the team and then hopefully can re-sign him afterwards, like after, next season. Um, he doesn't want to go anywhere. Obviously, he's a you know, Camden guy, so close to Philly native as much as you can get, really. Um, and he's 27 sacks in two years. You're not going to just let that guy walk. So unless you get a yeah. crazy deal, I mean, and people know that if they're going to come to the table with the trade, I don't see anybody doing that. Yeah, I mean, he's their best player on defense, so I don't think it's particularly close. And with the Vic Vangio scheme, like you have the perfect chance not to like let that man pull his ears back and just go after the but quarterback. Here's the thing, right? So on the point of the Fangio scheme, is Fangio does have his defensive ends drop yeah. into coverage probably just as much, maybe even more than Matt Patricia. I would think that Fangio will realize I have one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. Why would I have this guy drop and just let him do his thing? But th- there was that caveat before Reddit came out and said, Hey, listen, I did not request a trade. Like, I want to be here. Yes, I would like more money, but we'll see what happens. Where people are saying, yeah, maybe Reddick wouldn't mind being traded because he realizes he's going to have to drop a lot. It's a contract year. Defensive ends don't get paid to drop. They get mm-hmm. paid to get sacks. So maybe he's looking at the writing on the wall. But Reddick came out and kind of dismissed all of that and said that he wants to be here. But that's so, a little back and forth too with the D line coach that we just picked up too, where he says, I don't want my big boys dropping back. We're like, okay, well maybe him and Vic Vangio could be like, let's have fucking Nolan Smith drop back. He's more of a coverage guy. Anyway, he's yeah. not really a, a pass rusher, so to speak, or really a, a run game blocker. He's good at, you know, pass protecting, so to speak. Um, so I'd be curious to see. I just think it's more of a, you put that out there as a GM perspective or organization perspective, see what you can get. If you get a great offer, yeah, I mean, I don't see why you don't take it. It is a business, but the offer has to be, you know, I saw some reports for a second round pick. Fuck that. I mean, the guy's putting up 10 sacks a year yeah. just about. I would do a first. Yeah, easily. Yeah, I would definitely or, do a first. Or a younger positional player that makes sense for the scheme who's on the up and up. That's the only thing I would do it for. But just to let him walk or whatever it is for a cheap, you know, a cheap offer, they can't be doing that. Yeah, I think it's it's not completely unlike what we saw with slay last year right remember that where yep. like slay like wanted more money they were gonna sign cj gj then that fell through then slay was like all right well i played my last game as an eagle i'm i'm gonna look for trades mm-hmm. and then they brought him back could end up being a situation like that the difference is that reddick is signed so what i think happens is neither side really makes a move the eagles don't get the offer they're looking for Reddick doesn't really get any more pissed and say he wants out. He agrees to come back, puts up a monster year, and then they have a decision to make. Do they franchise tag him after that? Or a that? mid-year trade. Or a mid-year extension if he's really killing it. Right. But yeah, Trevor, to your point, he is their best player on defense. Like, you can't just let him walk. Yeah, you do have Josh Sweat. You do have Nolan Smith. You do have... Um, who the other pass rusher we got? Defensive end. Uh, well, well, BG's whatever. You don't really have. Any yeah, we other don't really. We don't have that ends, much. No. Yeah, so we have Josh Sweat, and Nolan Smith, and after that, you don't really have a whole lot. So you can't really afford to just trade Reddick for. That's what I mean. It has to peanuts. be. It has to be a ten out of ten. Okay, we're gonna make this trade, but I could see if anything, it's a mid-season trade, mid-season sign. But he doesn't want to leave. He loves it here. There's really no pressure to get rid of him. Um, in that sense, in a harsh way to put it, but I think it's just kind of off season fluff, maybe to distract some shit moving around. But it is Howie, so you never know how we could work some crazy ass deals to get some players. But the draft doesn't really have great, like, there's not a lot of people that are on the defensive end, defensive tackle type of field anyway. So you can get a good defensive player late first, early second round, which I think we go back to back defense unless you go O line first, but. I'm not too worried about that yet. Yeah, yeah, we'll have plenty of time to talk yeah. about the draft. I did think the timing was interesting. Super Bowl Sunday, Sunday morning. It's like, yeah, how he's just well, I'm good, just gonna throw this yeah. out there. Yeah. Chase like, Young's a free agent though after this year, right? They don't have him for the next year. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think they agree to anything with him. So curious there if they do that thing, but yeah, I'm not. I think it's just a, a fluff move. I'm not. I'm not overly concerned about it. Yeah, I mean. 
I had more concern about it before Reddit came out and said, yeah, I didn't ask for this. Which is pretty much half. That's what I'm saying, though. It's like, who? I don't know who's close to the team or who their fucking guy it's, is. But it's like, how he's feeding people. So that's what it is. Which I'm, if it's for a greater cause or like he's kind of working his little thing, I get that. But like all these internal reports, everything they've ever said this season has been fucking false. Just about. Hurts isn't a good leader. Every player that's been near him this season has been like, that's bullshit. AJ Brown wants out. He's unhappy. That's false. Reddick doesn't want to be yeah. here. Let him get traded. He's like, I really doesn't. It's a business. I understand yeah. if it happens, but like, I never requested shit. Like, just because you gave the man approval to seek a trade, doesn't automatically mean that he wants to get traded. It just means that he can test the market for himself if he wants. And if he comes back and says, "Holy shit," you know, X Y Z wants to give you guys this amount of pick and this player or whatever his agents work out. That's cool, but it doesn't they just work? They're looking for a shit because we don't have anything else to talk about for four or five months. That's all. Yeah, well, like, until the draft. Free, well, no, free agency starts next month. I'm just saying. But yeah, this no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, there are things to talk about, but not, like, really exciting, tangible no. things for a little while. Like, free agency. Also, that piques people's interest. It makes the whole other 31 teams go, well. That's why I think it Fred was leaked X- on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we can't have these teams hogging the spotlight here. Right. Yeah. The Eagles love to drop new. If there's something going on with one of the other Philly teams, they love to try to one up them and drop some kind of bit of news. Hey, it's good PR. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Good PR. Union dropped their new jerseys, 15th year. So oh, for real? Hit. Yeah. Uh, the Union, uh, I saw yeah. it. So not the, uh, I'm not a fan. Not uh, not the best jersey combo, but they look pretty good. It looks good. like they have a tire track going Damn, the, the Union middle. have been a team for 15 years already? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. Season. It's getting old yet. Mm-hmm. Jesus. But yeah, it's like that like bumblebee pattern, like the, the honeycomb kind of shit. It's yeah. like the little like hexagon kind of shit all up and down the front. But it does look like a tire track. Mm, but I it's cool they got the little like roman numeral 15 so looks yeah. all right you know it's cool mm, that was their pr that was their pr move post super bowl trying to <laughs> snag yeah. up some views hey, real quick the other football exactly yeah, yeah. so i guess that just about does it with the birds i don't think it really got yeah, anything no. else yeah i think that's it for the birds yeah uh sixers might as well yeah, they just came off a game yeah. we just watched a game we close. just finished watching them lose a uh Bit of a nail biter to the Heat. Yeah, but I mean, up till up till this point, up till today, things have been going better than I think any of us thought after the trade deadline. Yeah, Buddy Hield looks good. Even Cameron Payne doesn't look too bad. And you know, considering they have they still have all these guys out, hopefully once you get Tobias back, Batum, Melton. They should be able to put a, a pretty decent squad together to kind of hold things over until Embiid gets back. I think the biggest thing is just continuity with the team. I mean, Ricky Council sh- coming out. Yeah, Rick's hot. the man. That dude. man's playing I love nuts. Rick, dude. Yeah. You see, kind of a, we've been seeing this week over week of just a downfall of, you know, Ubre. The guy's doing what he can i guess i mean i don't know his, his stat line is usually a point scheme and then fouls, he, he did have know? a few a few good games which diane did let me know about <laughs> thank you diane for listening <laughs> yeah but uh yeah Ubre tonight was just back to just very Reckless inconsistent shit. not doing the, too great but we're not here to trash kelly Ubre today we did no no last i'm not week. i'm not trash i'm just saying that like you know it would help if he played a little bit better oh for sure in this transition period that's all because he's you know, one of the more tenured guys now this season on the team uh, when you have half the other guys out. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Buddy Heald is playing his ass off, which is great to see. Um, and campaign's doing enough just to not fuck up anything, which is good. Uh, but you see that loss of continuity without Tobias out there, without Melton out there, without Batum as well. You know, when Maxi got that little freak injury, wasn't in there for only four or five like, yeah, minutes, the team just looked minutes. fucking yeah. completely besheveled. So, you know, if they can write the ship real quick, they get a nice little break here with the all-star break. Hopefully guys get their bodies right, their minds right. They have a chance to come out here and, you know, fight for a lower seed for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, I think I've got some stats here on Buddy Hilt Hilt since the trade. This doesn't include tonight's game that just concluded. But since the trade, man, he's averaging 37 minutes a game, 22.3 points, 4.3 rebounds this is the one that got me 6.6 assists yeah. Yeah. he had nine assists tonight they said yep. on the broadcast he's shooting 52 percent from from the field overall 45 percent from three on nine attempts per game yeah like when he when they picked him up i figured yeah this guy can shoot 
he'll uh, he'll open up the offense just because he can shoot. I didn't expect him to be able to drive like he has. I didn't expect him to be able to pass like he has. Some of those passes tonight we were watching the game, I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. that's a nice pass. And then um, certainly just his overall floor game, to put the ball on the floor, get to the hoop, to finish over contact, through contact. He's a lot better than I thought. So much so that I had this thought when I was watching the end of the Cleveland game. So him and Tobias are both expiring contracts. Uh, the Sixers have both of their bird rights. Would you rather bring Tobias or Buddy back? Buddy, I feel like yeah, I feel like yeah. Should, what? That's, I feel like that's that's a pretty right? easy, easy, especially easy watching pick. them win that Cleveland game without Tobias. Mm-hmm. Trevor, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I think I've seen enough of Tobias yeah. Harris, especially yeah. when you consider the money and all that other shit. Like, um. And I think and Buddy Heald has just filled a, a real big need for them that they've had for a while. And, you know, I'd like to see them be able to carry that over in the next season. I mean, I'm really excited to see what it's going to look like when Embiid comes back. They're sort of like two-man game, sort of being able to do the type of things that we did when we had Reddick here. And I think that Buddy can do more than Reddick can. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to having him around for – the foreseeable future. Yeah, I mean, I think if he has a really strong, excuse me, audition in the last couple of months and you do get to see him with Embiid at the end of the season and into the playoffs, then at that point it's just kind of like, hey, you can't give him the max, but give this guy what he wants. Yeah. Cause he's, I mean, he fits in with this team as is already and he's only going to fit in more once he has Embiid to take a lot of the attention off of him. In tonight's game, you kind of saw it at the end of the game. All the attention was on Maxi and mm-hmm. Buddy at the top of the key. You needed Embiid either on the elbow or in the lane to kind of suck some of that away. And then if you have him in there against these elite teams, the Heat aren't elite, but they're they're a smart defensive team. Yeah. Against these smart defensive teams, your offense is just so much more open. Buddy's also been better than I thought he was going to be on defense. Like he's no like stalwart, but at the same time he can hold his own. He's smart. He had a couple ste- he had four steals in the game against Washington, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, this game, he was he was in the right position defensively more than he wasn't. So, I don't know. I think Buddy Heal for third star, potentially. Yeah, the only interesting thing is how all these pieces will fit once that B does come back and what NB we get when he comes back. You know, you got Lowry, yeah. you got Lowry coming back now. You're going to have a healthy Tobias, Patum, uh, Melton, Buddy, Campaign, Maxi, and Bede. How all these pieces fit together will be interesting to see because they're all kind of coming in at a weird time. Um, the All Star break is good for sure, mm-hmm. um, but you got young guys that want playing time that have been playing pretty decent as well, and like how they fit coming off the bench. Um, so that would be the only, I think, crutch going into a but you know into the playoff push is going to be once everybody is healthy and playing. I'm looking at Nick Nurse to see okay, well now we rely on you. You know, there's a reason why we picked him up. He's a good, young, aggressive coach mm-hmm. and does kind of things that way. But I would just be curious to see kind of how that whole team mends together with him beat on the floor. It sounds good on paper. And in our head, how it should look, you know, alleviating pressure for Maxi and Buddy and all those guys. But will it pan out? I-, I don't know, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. You kind of have to see what Embiid looks like. And how he operates. He's going to want to come out there. I don't want him to come out there and have to still be the man that thinks he has to run the team. I don't think he's going to want to do that. I hope so. but That's how he got hurt. Yeah, but you never know. I mean, Embiid gets a taste of playing hot again and putting up 35 points effortlessly that then he comes out and plays a good team and we go down by 10. It's a manageable deficit, but he tries to put the team on his back. It's just, you know, hopefully they can kind of level set real quick and get that together before we have to see a downfall again. But... That's my only gripe with how this could all work out. Hmm. I mean, it's just such a mystery when he comes back, if he comes back, what he looks like. It's, I don't know, it's a bunch of hypotheticals, I think. Hypothetically, in theory, he old Maxi and Embiid should should really be a, a scary through three-man mm-hmm. unit once you get into the playoffs. I mean, any of them can get their own shot. They can create for each other. They can play off of each other. Like you said, we kind of just have to wait and see. Yeah. I don't think Embiid's going to look... Embiid's probably watching this now and saying, 
oh, finally, we have a guy that can shoot and like can get right. his own shot. Gives you those Other extra 10, Maxie, 15 points a game It's like, no, I don't down. need to put up 36 for us to win. I can yeah. chill on 25 to 30 and let this guy cook and get 20 to 25. So we'll see, man. But the other guy we got to talk about, you mentioned him. Our boy Ricky Council, dude. Yeah. Killing it. The fourth. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the man. You know he's he's not the fourth generation. Did you know this? No. Yeah, his, what's the story? So, <laughs> his two brothers are Ricky Council, the second and third. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, rules. You guys didn't know that. That yeah. shit is Wait, wild. So, he's, he, so he, it's like George Foreman where he named all of his kids yeah, George me, or whatever. I was looking at his Wikipedia the other day. Do I still have it pulled up? That's so Ricky funny. Council. What? Not Ice Spice. Hey, Ice Spice. I was looking up her <laughs> Wikipedia, too. Ice Spice is all right. But uh, <laughs> where is it? Personal life. Council's two older brothers are also named after his father, Ricky Council. Both Ritz- Ricky Council the second. And Ricky Council the third also played college basketball. <laughs> Damn. He was just <laughs> so hoping for something to go pro real quick. <laughs> Damn. But hey, man. When well, you grow up as the the fourth Ricky Council in your family, and you're not the fourth generation, you're a dog. I mean, he even went as far to say it. He said, "This was after the game against Washington when he had his first career double double. He was making some big plays down the stretch." He said, "After that game, I just feel like I'm a dog. I feel like a lot of people say it, but not a lot of people are about it. I'm about it." <laughs> He's the man. Dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, what an interesting naming uh, tree, which is pretty cool in a way, I guess. But the fourth sounds like the better one of, you know, Junior, the third. Or I guess if yeah, you do. Yeah, Junior's kind of butt, dude. Junior's ass. Yeah. You always sound like you're the younger brother, but you're not really the youngest, like the youngest one. The second or the third, I mean, is like, meh. The fourth, once you get that little I and the V in there, that shit looks sick, too. Yeah, it's like a dynasty. Yeah. yeah. But, like, not because you're only, you <laughs> yeah, know, all brothers. Really, they're yeah, all, within, yeah. like, a 10-year span, so which funny. is weird. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious, man. But, yo, shout-out Ricky Council. Even tonight, he was balling. I thought he should have been in the game instead of Ubre instead mm-hmm. of came, campaign at the end of the game. Rick was giving you some defense, some hustle. Knocked yeah. down a couple jumpers, a contested yeah. three, if you will. You know what I'm saying? He was balling. Yep. And at the end of the game, when they couldn't get some rebounds, you have 6-2 campaign out there. He's feisty should've out there. Should have had 6-6. Six, six, Ricky Council, I'm a dog. You should have had him out there, man. I'm into it. So, again, like I said, you got a good t- – this is a good thing where they're not really getting blown out, which is great. You get a lot of, you know, coverage for these young bucks out here trying to prove themselves and playing actually pretty well, which I think is also a testament to Nick Nurse in a way. Yeah. Um. So, good to see. They're not, they're not doing bonehead plays either. You know, a couple things here and there. First half tonight, they had eight turnovers. But, you know, the Heat have – they're a great team. You know, they're not elite, but they do have the potential to be elite almost every other year when all healthy. And they get elite right. in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's not like you're playing just yeah, your like average. the best coach in the league, so they're yeah. always tough to play against, mm-hmm. even if their roster is not the greatest. Exactly, so it's still a good test, and they've historically given us a hard time when we play them. So, yeah, I just like the way the direction the team is going. Just hope that this break does them well. That's all. Yeah, I think it will. Um, all signs are pointing to them. All the injured guys coming back except Embiid after the break. Mm-hmm. Melton's been practicing. He was at the game on the bench today. I haven't seen that in a while. Tells you he's getting close. Tobias has been practicing. I think Tobias practiced the other day. Um, I heard Batum had practiced. Rocco, I don't think he's coming back. But you figure yeah. Kyle Lowry, by the time they play again next Thursday, yeah, he'll have moved back into Philly. He'll have gotten a cheesesteak, gotten mm-hmm. a hoagie, gotten a soft pretzel, his water ice. Yeah, there's not to worry about that heat culture anymore. He can just eat all yeah, those cheese sticks. Get back up to his just fill, up, greedy, just, just fill up that big ass of his, you yeah. know. Get back he's, to that Philly weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna he's gonna need to fill get that on big the court, ass up. Swing dude. those hips around, get those draw those fouls. Yeah, we're gonna need him to draw a lot of charges. He's gonna have to be <laughs> yeah. planted. Those mm-hmm. ham hocks exactly, gotta be strong, yeah. dude. Gotta have a nice strong foundation. But shout out, Philadelphia, uh, born and raised also. Cardinal Doherty, yeah. Brad, you know? Yeah, right. Uh, Would have went there, but they shut down, obviously, because uh, they couldn't get enough kids to go. But great school. My whole family went to Cardinal Doherty. Um, so Did your brother go to him. school with him? I don't know. What year? Uh, Lowry, Gret. How old? John's 40-something. So oh, no, no. Nah, nah, yeah, Lowry is 37, nah. I believe, or 38. Mm, 
Nope, just a bit too old for my sister because she went there. Everybody, aunts, uncles, my parents, everybody went there. So shout out Cardinal Docker. He holds a special place in our heart there in Philadelphia. Yeah, now we got a Cardinal Docker grad, dude. I don't really know what to expect from him. I think being back in Philly gives him a lift. I still think given the choice between him and Pat Bev, probably would add Pat Bev, but we'll see. I've been, yeah. We've been wrong about the trade deadline so far, so maybe we'll continue to be wrong. Morris turned it on, too. He got that little Philly pride at home. I mean, we, we were knocking that, too. And That's he was true. Playing, yeah. He played relatively well up until we they got rid to of get him. Kyle Lowry to City Hall, give him that key. To be like, uh, Morris, can we get that key back real quick? We had to give it to fucking Kyrie. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we'll see. But, you know, only time will tell. Yeah. We shall see. Do we want to talk about the Sixers almost traded for LeBron? Uh, that, that, all, that was a funny they story. Almost, we were one well, billboard were, away. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I just, dude, I I do love the fact that Daryl Morey pretty much employs the same, um, you know, sort of trade speculation strategy as just someone playing fantasy basketball. We were trying to just <laughs> see if, uh, does this guy not know what the fuck he's doing? Let me just offer him this crazy trade and see if he just clicks yes before he understands. It's like, but yeah, mm-hmm. Daryl Morey called up inquiring about LeBron and apparently the guy like came back at him and was like, is Embiid available? <laughs> <laughs> and then he also called up the Suns, asked about He asked about everyone. everyone Booker, yeah, Beal, Booker, KD. KD and Beal. I'm surprised I'm surprised they didn't uh show some interest in Beal when they get off that contract, but <laughs> I guess they're comfortable with the team they have. But yeah, I do love uh yeah, it just, it just it felt very armchair GM shit. Like, like Maury was listening to WIP beforehand and was like, you know what? I should give them a call about yeah. uh, Kevin Durant. You know, I You're backing of, off that time some, zone. Yeah, G, uh, yeah, Jim from uh, you know the Northeast made some pretty good points there. I'm gonna <laughs> follow up on this. Yeah, Maury's like, maybe I'll catch Rob Polinko while he's out at dinner. He's had a couple bottles or a couple glasses of wine, yeah. and uh, he'll agree to some dumb shit like this. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, man. Worst I can say is no. You miss yeah, 100% I mean. of the shots you don't take. Yeah. But yeah, I thought that was yeah, hilarious. That was funny. I mean, I would take LeBron. I don't want him with the baggage that would come if we have to draft his son, who we were just looking at his stats. Ass. Who's averaging five points and three rebounds and three yeah. assists on 35%. It's like fucking Tony Gwynn Jr. Yeah. Still a young buck. I mean, also, Matt, uh, insurmountable shoes to fill. I mean, that's just... He that's also a, that's a sin to have to be like, like if you're not as good as LeBron yeah. <laughs> then you're a fucking failure kid. Sorry, yeah. and them's the breaks. <laughs> yeah, that shit, you know, fucking almost died on the court in practice. Yeah, I was gonna like, say he also it's just died. Yeah, it's just yeah. not the best fucking you know stretch he's got. So yeah, he could win comeback player of the year. You know, Demar Hamlin Lamar. didn't win that this <laughs> Until year Joe though. Right? Learns, oh yeah, we went to go to Joe Flacco. Until well, Flacco learns basketball, then he's fucked. Yeah. It's like damn. He's the Joe Flacco the NBA. The Joe Flacco of the NBA. Uh, Vince so, Carter. Someone who's washed that everyone's like, but yeah, old, he's elite. But people love Carter. Uh, I can't think of anyone. It has to be like a guy that's I feel just like, like... basketball fans don't really hang on to guys like that. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Not usually. I was going to say P.J. Tucker, but P.J. Tucker was never that good. Yeah, he was never no. elite, as they say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe in his own mind. Whatever. Yeah, I no, guess no, there isn't a, a, thing there's not about. an NBA comp. No. Mm-hmm. There's only one Flacco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the Bobby Jersey's own. One. Right across the bridge. But, uh, all right, yeah. I mean, I think that's all I got for the Sixers. I don't have anything. Oh, last thing I have is it's a good thing the reinforcements are coming back. Schedule's hard, dude. Coming out of the break, we got Cleveland. Well, yeah, we just beat them, but I think they kind of overlooked the Sixers. Then we got Milwaukee. Ooh, Doc, that's Doc a win. Rivers, but Pat Bev, too, though. I tried to get – I was looking at tickets for that game. They were over 100 bucks for the cheapest oh, ones. And then we go to Boston. Mm. So, like, yeah, that's, that's a tough Gonna three-game stretch. Going to have to face Jaden Springer. <laughs> Well, you got a little the, the, old, the, old, Ricky, the old revenge game Ricky, for Jaden Springer. Oh, Ricky Council on yeah, Jaden Springer. Rick ain't scared of Jaden, yeah. dude. Think yeah. about those names. You got Rick. You got Jaden. Who are you taking in a fight? I'm taking Rick. Uh, I'm yeah, taking Rick, 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 baby. I'm taking Rick in a rock fight yeah. all, all day, man. I'm I'm putting two hundo down on Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess should we uh, move on and touch on our our flyers? 
Yeah, man. Yeah, let's see. Playing good since they came back from the All Star break. They just Shout. keep winning and winning. Hot as ever. Shout out Coots. Yeah, John Couturier gets that C finally after I guess this is this was their second season without a captain, right? I mean, since Giroux left, they haven't their had anybody. Second in the two year break. It was their second full season. Yeah, two year break. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because. Drew got traded when? Two years ago. At two the trade years deadline, yeah. not last season, but the season mm-hmm. before. So, yeah, two years. Just yeah. about to the day almost. Yeah, almost yeah. two years. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. I think it's good. good for him. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I th- feel like he was the obvious guy. I think he's probably the longest tenured. I guess, he, yeah, he, he might be is. the longest tenured athlete in Philly. Well, yeah, no. no. Brandon Graham well, still Fletcher has Fletcher Cox, I think. No, Brandon Graham has some Brandon Graham, yeah. Graham sure. or Kelsey? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, him and yeah. Kelsey are – nah. Katori was – was he on that finals team? He was, right? He was a rookie that year. In 2010? Yeah. I, no, I think your Drew was. Oh, that's right. That's Couturier what got up. drafted after like the Carter-Richards trade. So that I think 20... one of the picks they got for Carter turned into him. When was – how long has he been a flyer? Brandon Graham's still longer tenure. Brandon Graham's been here since 09, but – I think in that 2012 series against the Penguins, that crazy series, I think he was either a rookie or that was his second year. So it was I shortly think he after was a that. Rookie, yeah. 2011 entry draft. Yeah, when so was his rookie year. So that would have been the that season. Yeah, he made his debut 2011. Yeah, so he's probably the second. Yeah, he's got to be the second longest tenured athlete in Philly after BG, because Kelsey was 2012, right? Right. I don't know. Mm, that well, I don't. Uh, Cox I don't know. was. Maybe Kelsey and Cox are tied with him. I think they're about the same. I don't know if Kelsey was a f- first round. Uh, pick. He was a six round pick, and yeah. yeah, they're about they're probably about the same. Yeah, yeah. Fletcher Cox was that but, year too. But yeah, either but, way, good anyway, to have a seat back on been, the ice. Not to get distracted, yeah. but he's been here for a long time. Yeah, so that's good to see. You got the leadership uh, core kind of solid there. Uh, Scott Lawton gets the other A with Konechny. Well, he's had the, the other well, A. Well, he has. Yeah, he's had it. But I think Konechny getting the other A is warranted, and that's just further evidence that they really do plan to bring him back. They aren't intending on trading him. You can at this point. I mean, yeah. You yeah. kind of says he's your best player, and you have to be all in on making the playoffs. It would be foolish to sell. But I do also think that that portends to them thinking they're going to extend him in the offseason. Th- yeah, if I had to choose at this point, I, I would bet on them extending him. I think they see him as a you know, a future bedrock piece because he's still young enough. He'll still be pretty good through most of that contract when they should hopefully be seriously contending. Um, you know, I mean, they yeah, if you did trade him, they could get a pretty serious haul for him, but for whatever picks they get, they might not get a player as good as him. Yeah, I mean, and he's still young enough. So, to me, it makes sense to to hang on to him and re-sign him, even though it is, he's going to get a big-ass contract. But you got to pay for those guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, you figure with him and Mishkov as your wings, he can get a uh, a center somewhere. I don't know where you're going to get one. But if you can get a hey, first Morgan line. Morgan Frost, baby. He's yeah, – he's, 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 <laughs> He's no first yeah. line center. Yeah, he's been pretty. Not a bad he's been game. A pretty yeah. he's, he's Dude, ever since he's becoming he went, a serviceable two C, but yeah, no, they still need to get a uh, a, a solid uh, one. Ever since he went into Coots' office and was bitching, he's been playing he's his been ass off. His dude. office, Coot, yeah, said towards, Coots, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coots has an office. Yeah, yeah, Kateri has his. Own, yeah, he's they like, already hey, gave I'm, an office. I'm coming for that spot, dude. But now, nah, ever since he went in towards his office. And just started complaining about his playing time. Torts gave it to him. He's taking yeah. and run with it. Yeah, he's been good. Um, yeah, Ristolainen's out for a while now, which he was kind of like maybe an outside possibility of getting traded. I know that a couple teams were kind of interested. It would be nice to get off that contract, and you figure they have enough guys, you know, depth wise in their system at, at defense. Now that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting how this changes the calculus with if he's going to be out, are they still going to go ahead and try to trade Sean Walker? I think they still will. Uh, I don't I don't know if I would. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't think I... Hmm. It's interesting because, well, the, what, what makes it kind of interesting is that normally if the Flyers are, you know, we're in this position where they're like a bottom five, bottom ten team, then you would pretty much have to trade them. 
and that kind of gives away some of your leverage. But right now, Danny Briere can basically be like, look, I don't have to trade this guy. We're in a third in the Metro. Exactly. We're in a playoff spot. So if he's not – so at this point, I mean, I think it's just going to be if someone offers a first rounder, I think they take it. I think they have to. But if not, then fuck it. Hold on to them. Yeah. Yeah, I think the vibes are too high right now. Yeah. Man. You can't trade these guys. Like, there's the talk about trading Lawton as well, which I'll get to in a second. With Sean Walker, prior to the wrist aligning injury, I would say, yeah, go ahead and do it, just by almost any means necessary. But now, I mean, you kind of need him to fill that spot for the next three weeks. Granted, trade deadline isn't about three weeks, but who knows if he comes back in three weeks, right? Yeah. Who knows what he looks like when he comes back. Where Sean Walker gives you perfectly cromulent defensive line or defensive play. And I was going to say defense line, heads on football. It's going <laughs> to give he gives you perfectly criminal defensive play. Yes, he's been not as good as he was to start this season, but he's fine. And I think that just he's been pretty good the past couple of games too. He had like a nice, uh, he had like a power play goal the other night. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I was. I mean, if I got a good offer for him though, I would. Pull the, have to pull the trigger on it. Yeah, if you get a first for him, then I mean, the I'm way, still like doing some it. of the, like the what people have been getting for some of these guys has been pretty wild. So, and I think he still has one more year on his deal, I think. So it's not just a rental. So, I mean, if you can get a first, then go for it. Anything else, just hold on to him. The vibes are good. The Lawton thing, there was there has been a ton of talk about trading him. He's been pretty good. His goals in the last couple games has been playing better. He's been playing with a little more fire, a little more jump, as the hockey men say. And uh, yeah, he's got he, playing with that jam. Yes, yeah. Lavulette would say. And they didn't take the A away from Lawton. That if they took it away, then that would well, that mean, would have been just like fucked up and crazy. Yeah, but, but that would mean the, like yeah, this guy's out of here. But yeah, yeah that that would have been that would have really <laughs> ruined the vibes. Like, yeah, that would would have been like mean and weird. <laughs> but the other thing I'll say about and not the trade him, just keep him there. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, just like no, we're we're yeah, we're giving it to Rasmus or I don't even know who the fuck they would give it to. Probably Sandheim, I guess, would probably be the next in line. He's been there for a while. Yeah, now. probably. He's like effectively their their number one defenseman right now yeah but yeah i guess my last thing on the lawton piece is yeah they still could trade him but i think we the flyers have kind of shown us over the last year or two that they do pay attention to what the media says and the fan reaction i think if they trade lawton unless they get a decent haul there's gonna be outrage not not even because he's been that good this year just because he's been here for so long and he's just yeah. represents the team in so many mm -hmm. different ways in, in the community. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I definitely agree that they're not going to trade him for peanuts for exactly what your reasons are saying, but if they get a good offer, I think that they have to pull the trigger on that. And given... What's what a good offer for him? Um, I don't know, first and change. You think he would command a first? I think it could. If you saw what that dude like Monaghan got, like uh, somebody... Yeah, I mean... Hmm. I mean, if he commands a first, then I mean, if it's, do a, it. if it's yeah. a contending team that ha it's going to be the back end of that round. I mean, fuck it, like the Flyers traded their thirteenth overall pick for Rasmus Ristolainen. Well, that was a, a different different GM different that didn't know what the hell he was well, doing. Well, different scenarios, but it's, I mean, you know, some some of these guys don't know. <laughs> they, you they got some dumbass GM out there, yeah. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these old school hockey guys. And, I mean, Scott Lawton, to what we've been saying, does have a lot of these sort of, um, you know, intangible qualities that these guys like. And he's also just, for a fourth liner, he's very effective on the ice. So, it wouldn't shock me if they could get a, a first rounder for him. I mean, if they can get a first rounder for him or Sean Walker, I get it. Anything yeah. less than the, I don't see them. I wouldn't do I it. Mean, if Sean Walker can get you a first, I think Sean, Scott Lawton certainly can. But we'll see. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, also, the big game on Saturday. The oh, yeah. Stadium the series. stadium series. I, yeah, I kind of forgot about that that was going on. How are you feeling about that? Um, Against the eh, Devils. The Devils have not been as good as advertised this year. They did lose two of their players <laughs> to the uh, the scandal thing. Um, nice. Yeah, they could certainly. The Flyers could certainly. What are you hold out. What you're saying, nice, and you're chuckling about it. 
A woman got a soft. No, 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 no. I'm not saying. I'm saying it good for them for losing their players like that. You know, what I mean, I'm not saying. Obviously, I'm not condoning anything. All right, no, that's just, not what I'm I saying. I couldn't let that slide all. without you correct. No, 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 no. You know what? I, I would hope that people understood what I was trying to do there. <laughs> obviously, uh, but it's gonna be cold out, so like you know, it could be interesting, it's scrappy be, game. Yeah, it could be cold. There's a forty percent chance of snow. Beautiful, oh, really? even better. Yeah. It's forty degrees, forty percent chance of snow. Could also be rain, which would suck. Would be like the game we were at. Yeah, rain outside sucks. Uh, the, oh, especially when it's hockey. cold out too. Mm-hmm. No overhang. That shit's just brutal. Yeah, I kind of wish we were going, but we'll be in a different part of New Jersey. Yes. Yeah, that we will be. But yeah, that's also a... by the water. Yeah, that's but yeah, true. I think they pull it out. Fuck it, I think they win. It's a big game, man. The Devils are only six points back with one game in hand. Yeah, like Trevor said, they did lose a couple of their players, and they haven't been as good. But, I mean, coming down the playoff stretch, every point matters. It's an exciting environment. You're in, like, a yeah. you know, cool setting. I don't know. Yeah, outdoor games are always fun. Yeah, they're cool shit. Yeah, yeah they're hockey a lot of fun. hockey outside is, the way it just meant feels to be. cool. Yeah. yeah, it's just neat. So, I think the Flyers fucking pull it out. I like the jerseys. I like yeah, the, they're not bad. I like the, what is that, all white, pretty much? It's, yeah, dr- yeah, predominantly white, and then... Um, yeah, I, don't I know. think it's cool. I don't really know how to describe them. I like them. The year we went, those were ones were all cool. black. Yeah, I, I like yeah, those. They too. were real good. I wanted one of the, those. The ones like the they were the orange with kind of the like the orange accents, but it was mostly just black. Yeah, I and wanted. And the seat and the the main thing was black too. I think the main like Flyers logo was dark with a little bit of orange. I don't highlight. remember that part. I re- I just remember yeah. really wanting one. Yeah, the they pocket. were sick. I got a hoodie instead, which the hoodie's cool. I still rock it, but they were sick. Yeah. But, yeah, man, I think they pulled it out. Yeah, it should at least be a good game. Yeah, what was the game? When did, oh, they played in Lake Tahoe last year. Oh, and the ice was all, like, yeah, m- they had the torn games. up and melted. That was kind of the a disaster. The sun was messing the ice up, and then the Flyers just got wrecked. And they got wrecked, yeah. Yeah, so, that yeah, was hope, a disaster. Hope, so hopefully, hopefully this one's better. better than that. Yeah, this one's not in California. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know was about it. On the... Yeah, I got nothing else. I had to talk about the the stadium series for a minute, though. Yeah, uh, but speaking of uniforms, shifting to awful, awful uniforms, the the new Fanatics um, MLB replica jerseys. Yeah, they look so they got, bad. We got a dude. little sneak peek of those when pitchers and catchers reported, but oof, those are rough, man. Yeah, they look the, really The numbers bad. or the nameplates all small. Mm. Um, yeah, it looks like a. Um, someone pointed out, it kind of looks like a like a children's jersey. You know how like the nameplates are on that. It's just kind of like skinnier. Um, well, they're like, it looks, like, it looks they're like a jersey on there. Yeah, yeah. There's no stitching. It's all just ironed on. Ugh. Yeah, the colors look off. I've. Uh... Quote, quotes from a couple of the the St. Louis Cardinals players. They look cheap, one Cardinals player said. I don't like them, another Cardinals pitcher said. Cardinals pitcher Miles Michaelis also said that the uniforms, quote-unquote, don't fit right, and the fabric differs from the material used in the past. The side-by-side of the... This is from the Sporting News. They compared a couple Mariners jerseys. They said the side-by-side of the two Mariners uniforms also de- details part of what is wrong with the new batch. Not only has the quality taken a hit, but the sizing, particularly of the names, has also shrunk. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, the players dude. are already saying, like, these uniforms suck. Yeah, fin- How long does this last? I don't know, dude. Dude, Fanatics is so awful. It's really uh, it's really uh, uh, a, a travesty what they've done with how they're just taking over all of the officially licensed apparel. Because, I mean, like, gr- like, having, like, getting, like, a new... As like a sports fan, like getting a new jersey is one of like the most like kind oh, yeah. of exciting fun thing. Like you, like Christmas morning, you open the box. There's like a no- new like jersey in there. That's like the best feeling in the world. It's like the coolest thing you can have to wear, and it, it's just become just cheap, lowest common denominator, maximize the profits as much as possible. Just bullshit. You like the jersey because it's going to have some longevity to it potentially. Yeah, maybe the players, now it's like you're worried maybe that the players the numbers are going to be a Hall of Fame player. Off, all yeah. this other shit. I mean, at this point, you might as well just buy those knockoffs you can get in China. They're right. like the same quality. Mm-hmm. They start fraying all the time. Way like, cheaper. Ain't no Mitchell and Ness type of shit where it's nice and hand stitched and you got the good like vintage yeah. jersey with the little elastic bands and all that. But yeah. you like a good quality jersey. 
Dude, Mike they, Rubin. They cost a fuck enough. You know yeah, what I mean? right? You're paying $200 for a jersey yeah. where the name's spelled backwards or, like, the numbers are really small in yeah. comparison to the rest yeah. of the jersey. Just, no, you can't be doing that. Yeah, everything's off center. Fucking Michael Rubin, up. doesn't he own Fanatics? Yes. Yeah, yeah this is his fault, yeah. dude. What a, Everything's yeah. his fault. Uh, he should be uh, arrested. What do you think he's going to make next? Next, uh, astronaut suits. We're going to send people up into space <laughs> yeah, with some bullshit be, ass. Yeah, yeah. like licensed gear from Fanatics. Yeah. And the I don't know. The helmet's just going to come off, and they're just going to die. Be all they're just air. not going to be able to breathe. They're going to yeah. die. Yeah, yeah. He's going to make scuba diving gear. He's going to make chainmail that doesn't protect a fencer. <laughs> <laughs> People are getting yeah. stabbed left and right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He's going to start making bulletproof vests. Dude. Yeah. The, that just, that, they don't work. They're just, bad. Well, if they just, see, hopefully they can at least Velcro. see the jersey quality. be like, you know what? I'm not going to buy this guy's bulletproof vest. But people have been Dude, he's trying to get a monopoly on all shit. gear. He's going to start making shoes. Yeah. They got just, Kevin Hart on that shit, have too, the selling the fucking and athletic it. pants and all that, which... Not bad. The deals are pretty good, but yeah, they need to arrest Mike Rubin. They need to bring yeah. him in. Bring him in. Brutal. Next time he's got one of those those yacht parties when he's on his yacht out there with uh, James Harden, they just need to surround it with uh, with the U.S. aircraft with carrier his own jersey, and a bunch just of cover bunch of up. submarines. Take him in. Put him in jail, man. For anyone, run, for either of the people running for president, forget yeah, forget forget Hillary for president. I want Mike Rubin for president, man. No, he said Put he wouldn't do it. Put that guy in prison. You want him for president? Prison. Oh. oh. Prison. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jail. Yeah. I was going to say, if you mentioned felony, a submarine. Felony fraud. He, he just, is the king of felony fraud. He should have just stuck with, with uh, skis. That's what he's doing. You mentioned the submarine. Put his ass in a submersible. <laughs> the submersible. Dude, he is the type of guy who would have gone in the submersible. For real, though. In his own jersey. Yeah. He'd probably build his own submarine and die in it. Yeah. But that material, yeah. Dude, yeah. He's, not a, he's not a big material he's guy. Like, yeah. Dude, he literally is the same mindset as the submersible guy. It's like, no, we're going to have nice cheap material. We're going to yeah. be able to do this on the cheap. We're going to be able to have people come in and make the most money as possible. They're one need to step buy closer to having just Velcro for the nameplates. That's it. Just yeah. interchangeable. Oh, someone got traded. Yo, that is going to be a thing. Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't even consider that. Corny as shit. I want to swap my number out. All right, well, you can just Velcro your number down to your back. Ass. Yeah, he's an asshole, dude. <laughs> yeah, no more. No more Mike Rubin. I want to pay more money for my jerseys for better quality. Yeah, right. Like, people aren't trying to pay better, like, more money for bad quality in any walk of life. Also, the good part about buying a jersey is that it isn't, you, just, you don't just go buy a jersey every year. You find a player that you like. They tend to have a good career. You buy it midway through, hope they stick and play well for a while. And then when they get really good in, like, a legendary player, you still have the jersey that you have when yeah, they it's were relevant these, forever. Yeah, yeah, you know, you don't think you buy a jersey every year. Ain't nobody trying to do that well, shit. Well, you, you hook up with Michael Rubin and start buying his jersey. You're having to buy Jalen Hurts' jersey every year for the next 10 years. Bullshit, yeah. Who uh, wants to do that? No nope. one. Mm -mm. But, I mean, hey, that's all he lines Some people, pockets, though, I guess dude. he's got some people doing it enough to still... Be a billionaire. Uh, very few people. People buy it because he's basically monopolized the industry. Yeah. But very few people are actively like, yeah, oh, I love fanatics. No. If if anyone is yeah. listening to this pod, if anyone is Dude, watching this. Dude, having to be the, the social media person for fanatics must be one of the worst jobs oh, ever. Because it's just Lord. nothing but people complaining you're about just, yeah. You probably go home and want to cry. Yeah, if you look at, at like, the the, like the fanatics like Twitter mentions, it's just a feed of pictures of jerseys with the letters all fucked up and just <laughs> yeah. other kind of some shit of like those that. are travesty too. yeah it's wild damn there's just no quality control at all you know yeah mm. well michael rubin you suck uh i guess you know who else sucks <laughs> spencer turnbull oh uh, yeah well uh, that's another depth signing i guess yeah my man dude in his career oh this is bad his win loss record 12 and 29. Good God. F a 455 ERA. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that spin move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listeners. Just as bad as that ERA. <laughs> yeah, listeners, if you, you just heard us laugh, Trevor got up to go to the bathroom and just banged his head on the shelf in his basement. <laughs> He was so distracted by the DRA. I don't even know how the logistics of that worked out. He <laughs> yeah, had, there was no need to hit that. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know how oh. that even worked out. <laughs> He had the elegant spin move, though. He did. That was like when you're, you're playing Madden and you hit the B button on accent to spin. You're like, shit, I'm spinning. You plap. Damn. But yeah, th- you know, it's a. it seems like a, I don't know if they, it's like NFL, it's, like you got like a camp arm. Like the guy exactly. just be there be throwing shit. Like they haven't made a move. This isn't a move. It's just something to do to get someone else. It's a warm pitches. body. Yeah. yeah. Just you need someone to throw some shit for you guys to hit in the uh, summer league and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the guy they signed a couple weeks ago, Allard, who yeah. I was on here talking about. It's a, a low risk, high reward. Maybe you bring this guy in, see if you can make it, if you can figure it out to where he's solid. They have but, good uh, pitching coaches, and you have you got a bullpen that's at least got some hell of experience. The last three, four years, you got Wheeler, you got Nola. So maybe this guy comes in. You know, you got Sanchez, um, or Suarez. I mean, and. You know, and Sanchez, both of those yeah. guys. Yeah, he comes out there, pitches a little bit. Even Walker, to be honest, not terrible. I forgot about him. Yeah, so you got a guy that might not be the best pitcher, but for training camp and fucking, you know, doing the shit in the summertime, it is what it is. You don't want to waste the good arms, and our bullpen is getting a little old. I'm not gonna lie, so you can't be having him throw too many pitches uh, in the off season that way, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, I get the move. Not crazy about it, but it is what it is. Like you said, it's a, it's a warm body. It's a guy to throw pitches, and maybe he has some. Good to but, see him back out there, though. You know, I yeah. mean, I like seeing everybody out there and everything like that. I had to uh, represent today. Yeah, first day they came back, dude. Um, yeah. good to see Topper having a good comment too. He's like, these guys just coming back. They're excited. They're happy. I feel like last year, and you can kind of see it. I know it's only the first day and all that, but I feel like this uh, spring or whatever it is. Um, when they play in the summertime and all that shit, that at least you'll be able to see that they are looking a little bit more eager to get back there. I mean, going back to the World Series, almost the World Series two years in a row, but at least hosting uh, the NLCS again two years in a row, that these guys are eager to win something. I think that helps. Well, You're not fat and happy yet. You know, like they're still, most of them in their prime from the bats perspective. Pitching's getting a little older, but they they need to go prove, this is a really their prove it year. Yeah, I'm tired of hearing about they got all the fucking, oh, my God, they can hit 40, hope whatever it is. Like These guys are hitting the ball like crazy. They can do this and that. Prove it this year. Do something then. Because you really still haven't done shit. Yeah, I mean, what I think it is, too, right, is if you think about this time last year, they're coming off a surprise trip to the World Series. They took the Astros to six games. They rode into the, the to spring training, like, kind of smelling themselves a little bit, weren't yeah. as hungry. Whereas the way last season ended... Just embarrassing fashion, losing game six and game seven at yep. home to no disrespect to the Diamondbacks, but not a, a an elite not team. Not a great team. And uh, also, last year you figure Harper. Yeah. Right? You you knew you weren't going to start with him. This and year Turner he's too. back. Yeah. You have On the Harper slump. back. You have Turner. Turner's been here for a year. They, they got a taste of what it feels like to really lose. Like losing in the World Series is one thing, but losing in the NLCS to at a, home. a mediocre team at home, losing game six and seven, that's like a, a stinging defeat. And a historically good home field advantage. Yeah. They just shot that record to shit. I yeah. mean, that was defeating the sea in and of itself. I think, um, to your point too, having Harper back healthy, you got Trey Turner, hopefully not having that slump. Um, and honestly... It depends on how they start the season. I think the bullpen is going to be the bullpen that we had the last two years. Like it'll be okay. It's not going to be anything that's going to be too crazy, but they'll do enough to win games. It really depends on how they start. You can't afford to have the first twenty-five games be which they have. Even the year they went to the World Series, be like oh, they were slump. bad. Like yeah. the first fifty games of that season. Yeah. They need to come out this season and be the team that we all expect them to be and win fucking games from the jump. I mean, there's no reason why this roster can't be how the Dodgers were two year, you know, two years ago. Even San Diego. I mean, you have, you literally have the talent. It's like the Eagles. If they come out and disappoint again and barely get into the playoffs, they'll just be like the Birds were this year, where it's like, how are we not playing well? That's all. Yeah, I mean, they've started slow, but hopefully this is a year that they don't. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I guess 
baseball. Yeah, where Brandon getting knee surgery. <laughs> yeah, that kind of came out of nowhere. That. I like it. I think it's good. You Clean like it, Mister? I like knee surgery. Oh, yeah. A thumb, a thumb. Play with a torn thumb. Oh, you're getting knee surgery. Oh, I love yeah, it. Get that. Get shit. that knee surgery. Get yeah, that shit. knee surgery. Yeah, get the knees figured out get right. You still got. So what? you're you're anti thumb, but pro knee. At least he's getting it done at the right time. Unlike Embiid, who's got to get that knee surgery done in the middle of the fucking <laughs> yeah. season. Thumbs yeah, also, <laughs> also, the thumb shit is a bitch move. I mean, you know, your thumb starts to hurt, whatever, no big deal. Your knee, I get that. The guy's playing outfield, got to run around. That's okay. Get it cleaned up, <laughs> fix it up. You're good to go. A but thumb, I would say arguably, come on. I mean, maybe uh, I think your thumb is more important in most things than your knees. Like if I had to choose between having a bad knee and a bad thumb, I'll take the knee for sure. Because you can limp around and stuff. But imagine trying to do things day to day without a thumb. Imagine trying to walk. Hmm. But there's there's lot, there's plenty of things that can help you walk. There's not a whole lot of things that but, can help you replace the mobility and the utility of, of but the thumb. you can do more things with one hand than you can do with one leg. Bingo. Right? Like, yeah. You can't walk with one leg. You can still, like, drive with one leg. You can still cook with one arm. You can get like, a peg leg. You're not doing that doing when you're getting knee shit, surgery. Dude. Since I'm talking about, see, we get all a little crazy with the hypotheticals here. When it comes <laughs> down to it, yeah, Derek Hall is always and always will be a bitch for <laughs> some injuries. But a knee injury for a guy that's out there in the outfield running around more times than not, Derek Hall couldn't suck that shit up. He yeah, can't. I mean, grab- Brandon Marsh is playing center field sometimes. Left, you know, left He's running field. around. He's got to. He need those knees. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm you gotta not get that shit right. Getting- also, the way Rojas looks. You seen that video we yeah, put Yeah, Ross looks a yoke, He's dude. looking fucking jacked. Yeah, he looks brolic ass, He's about dude. to get drug tested ASAP. Yeah, he's, he probably did he's today. He probably got drug yeah. tested today, let's he's be honest here. fucking looking real big. So I feel, you know, I feel good about it, but get your knee cleaned up. You got plenty of time in baseball. You did that shit now. You got all yeah, whole got spring over training. a month and a half. Yeah, you got time. He's going to be rusty. Also, him coming, it's not like Harper where you're like, oh my God, he's coming in rusty. Marsh, we could kind of, the team is built that we should be able to survive without until, Brandon Marsh for a fucking month Until you Cave in left field on opening day, then you're like, oh, okay. I like the old cave, man. Yeah. Jake, anyway. J. Cave, who looks like he's I'm 45. Saying, J. The, cave and the bad seeds. Get the D figured out. You got Cassianos. You got Schwarber still. You got Rojas. We'll be all right. I ain't worried about it. Yeah. It's going to be good. If it was the thumb, cut him. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Trevor, Trevor is... Pro thumb, Pat's pro knee. I mean, I think you need all your bones and ligaments, but... I mean, obviously, but don't be a bitch about it. I do think if I had to pick between one or the other, I'd take having two knees over having two thumbs, but maybe that's just me. Anyway. Mobility yeah. is key. Guess is, uh, that's that's all that is. Yeah. So you all excited for AC this weekend? Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yo, shout out Lewis, shout out Vamo Coffee, Lewis is getting married in two months, the boys are going to AC this weekend, going to see Cat yeah, Williams, Cat Williams. Hell yeah. the man that helped make 2024 the year of violence when he came out, <laughs> just was taking no prisoners. I loved it, I'm pumped for that shit, I think it's going to be a phenomenal weekend, got a great, book, great group of guys going down there, Cat Williams just like the cherry on top, honestly, that could end up being a really, really fucking great show. Yeah, I think that's going to be hilarious. He he, brilliant marketing on his part to have that Shay Shay interview, mm-hmm. uh, knowing yeah. he was going to go on this tour when man knows how to fill some seats. I mean, that's what he does. I mean, based off of just that interview alone, that's what he does. He's a good showman that way. Um, but yeah, I'm fucking pumped. Could be a little chilly out, but it's AC, so it should be a good time. Do a little gambling, hopefully win some money, probably lose some money. Yeah. Drink probably a lot. Go find the buffet. Partake in some. Yeah, need some buffets. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've, never, I've actually never been to AC. I don't know what. Yo, I used to what get to, to do I'm, down there. I haven't been to AC in like 10 years. I went there for my 21st when I was working at Wegmans. I went there with my coworkers there. Ooh, I got, I got extremely buck. <laughs> um, That was before I even really knew what buck was, dude. But, uh, you were I went, a young, a young buck. Yeah, I was a young buck. I went there with a cardigan, a nice button-up shirt. We went out to a club <laughs> somewhere, man. 
I took off the cardigan, threw it across the club, never seen it again. <laughs> took off the button-up Damn. shirt, threw it across the club in the other direction, never seen it again. Lost my keys, lost my wallet, lost started driving home, like, then the following day, started driving home and realized, like, halfway home, like, oh, I don't have my wallet or my keys. I wasn't driving. Someone else was driving. I was, say, I'm like, I was like, how'd you use your yeah. car? <laughs> he said, how am I driving without my keys? What the fuck? So, yeah, then had to turn around and go get it. <laughs> Did you realize do... that you've just been sitting in your car yeah. in a parking lot hallucinating for He was five just hours? going downhill for a while. I was like, wait a second. Had to do that walk of shame back oh, to yeah. the casino halls to get my shit. Did not ever find the shirt of the car again. I really love that card again. Man. I'd probably still be wearing it today, 14 years later. But They said, what a classic newbie down here yeah oh i was on yeah. one and then another time i was in ac you know when i was in ac the game against washington where vic had the crazy bomb oh my god to, to start i remember the game watching off? yeah i remember yeah. watching that game in the, the hotel room and going down the casino and gambling till like 1 a.m oh what a great then, game then driving home should not have driven home kids don't drink and drive <laughs> and uh yeah getting home at like four in the morning still lived at home yet my mom was furious and i had to get up and go to work at 10 a.m the next day nice little six Damn. hours will do though yeah uh, man i was a buck young buck dude yeah i'm yeah. looking forward to it. it should be a good time we don't have anything planned except beef stew beer dogs we're going to a buffet Cat Williams. Oh, we gotta yeah. go yeah i was looking up i some might of these. pick up a shit ton of bacon just to have all right <laughs> no, no, no one will be mad about that be, That's just nice. argue, yeah. although yeah. trevor's on snack duty yeah, I don't know what kind of snacks to get. Wing it, dude. I mean, I'll pick up some stuff. We'll Basic just be drink, drinking and having a good time. Doritos. Yeah, I can run out Friday morning. Pretzels. To the Acme. Yeah, you got off. You got time to float yeah, around. You know what you got to get? Some jalapeno poppers. Mm-hmm. Moss sticks. Yeah, some moss sticks. You don't got to make them. You can just get some put stuff we oven. can put in the oven. Dino oh, nuggets. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Get in the frozen That's section. That's what you got to get. We all yeah, fucked like up. We could come around yeah, like 1 o'clock in that. the morning on Friday, you know, Friday Late at night, Friday night, like, Saturday morning. Yeah. Like, damn, those hoagies are going to be gone pretty quick. Be like, I want a little fucking munchy snack. That's what I'm quick. saying. Yeah. But uh, anyway, there's no one. I don't think the listeners want to really hear about <laughs> our late night <laughs> munchy the, plans. The snacks. <laughs> Tell but, us your favorite snacks, everybody. Yeah, email us at citywidepod at gmail dot com. There you yeah. go. For all but them, that, all them snacks. But that AC should be fun. Do some gambling. Go to the buff casino buffet at like five o'clock in the morning. Oh, you yeah. ever done that? Oh, y'all never been. Mm-mm. Yeah, I did yeah, that one never... time. Oh no, we we. <laughs> this is actually a funny story. <laughs> I was trying to get off the AC topic, but so like years ago, I went down to AC. It was me, Fakaz, who shout out Fakaz. Um, I think Fakaz, Noel, I think Dean might have been the other one. Is a motley crew. I got done working at Wegmans one night. Noel texts me. He's like, yo, you want to go to Atlantic City for the night? I'm like, yeah, why not? Oh, Reno was there. Joe Reno. Shout out Reno. I know he listens to the pod. Um, but so we go down to AC. It's like a Thursday night. Vicaz has a room. Vicaz is just sitting in the room, just drinking beers, getting wasted. Right? <laughs> so we go down to the casino at like 11, 11 o'clock at night. And we wander around. I don't couldn't even tell you what we did. I'm pretty sure we just wandered around the casino until like 3 o'clock in the morning. Then, like, we all, like, are, like, drunk. And we're like, damn, dude, yo, I'm hungry. So, um, we start wondering, like, what are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? So, this old lady, she's got, she's probably, like, 85 years old. It's, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. She's just sitting there, minding her business, playing the slots. She overhears us. It's like, oh, you could go get a $5, or maybe it was $8, I don't remember. You could go get an $8 steak dinner at the Bally's t- Casino across the way. So we're like, oh, yo, <laughs> $8 steak dinner, let's go. But we're all so drunk, right? So we start wandering around trying to find this place. We never did find it. Like we a- ended up going to a, a, like a bodega getting like Chef Boyardee. <laughs> <laughs> and like Damn, two, that's a big and step like down. Canned steak tuna dinner. and bread. And just having that in the room. The funniest part is the next morning when we wake up, the hotel with the, the steak dinner was the hotel right next to ours. Damn. <laughs> Atlantic City, man. I'm excited Damn. to be back. Hell yeah. We get to create some more debauchery like that that we'll talk about on the pod next yeah. week. What yeah. you got for us here? What we got uh, pulled up? Did we want to talk? Uh, President's Day is Monday. So I was looking up some, <laughs> some, some, some no, presents. Shout out to the facts. presidents. 
Uh, hit us with a couple. Yeah, this is from History.com, like the History Channel website. Let's see. Number one, George Washington. Wooden teeth. Uh, Own slaves. Yeah, well, I mean, that would be a lot of these first few. Is, that a, is, that, is, that a, is this those facts or is this fun facts? They're supposed to be like uh, facts that you maybe didn't know. Some of them are fun. Some of them are not so fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, George Washington was apparently an enthusiastic dog breeder. He was fucking uh, dogs particular like that? For, uh, for hunting hounds, to which he gave names like Sweet Lips and Drunkard. He was <laughs> he named the dog Drunkard. He laid a, Sweet li- He was fucking those dogs. Yo, he was in a bestiality like that. It had to be. Yeah. Uh, sweet fourth, Lips. Well, he was he a single? George Washington was single. He never married. There wasn't there like a Martha Washington? Nah. Martha. He got married. Was that some other. Martha could be anybody's wife. I feel like it's a president, but for like a good. There were only like year, five names back for like then. a forty-year span. I feel like I'm that pretty covers. sure he never married. He probably married a dog, dude. That's who Martha was. He might have had a, a woman, but he was always fighting wars and shit. He didn't have time for that. I don't Let's think. See. No, he definitely did. Maybe have a wife. I, I could have sworn there was a Martha. That's what I said. Oh yeah. Her name was Jane Butler. Oh, uh, okay, what a, what not a, Martha. I don't know where I'm getting Martha ass from. Ass name, Who the hell? Jane. See, it's the same. Martha Jane. Oh, uh, he was married. They all could have been dogs. Nah, you were right. Martha Dandridge Curtis. Oh, yeah, there we go. She she was the Ooh, widow of a plantation that. owner. So yeah, Move. she he had two she wives. Owned slaves. Yeah. She definitely was racist. He had two wives. Number four, James Madison was the shortest president at five four. Barely weighed over a hundred pounds. Damn, dude! Shout out to the short kids. Right shrimp there. president. Yeah, he yeah. probably got bullied. Yeah, but then he's like, "Yo, I'm president. I'm putting this is like ass before, in jail." Yeah. What year was this? Five four might have been kind of tall back. Eighteen oh nine. George Washington was like six foot four though. Yeah, they, that's true. Abe Lincoln was like six five he was big or some shit. shit. But yeah. George Washington was like apparently like a a weird sighting to see because most people weren't even that tall. So six foot was like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, he's probably like a B. They're like a giant. Like, oh. Yeah. William Henry Harrison. Most of you will probably know this one, but what the you, shortest, uh, shortest yeah, like tenure, a few 30, weeks, right? 32 days. Yeah. What did he get? What did he have he pneumonia? Died. He died. Apparently yeah. he gave like a long speech in the outside rain. in the rain and that yeah, I got like pneumonia or something. Yeah. Yep. Bitch ass Dude, lungs. John Tyler fathered 15 children. Most 15? of any president. Dude, my ma- in the White John House? John Tyler's a pimp and a player. In uh, the White House? I'm probably not all He was that fucking time. in all the rooms he's in the like, White that House. Was only, that was only four years, so that's pretty much impossible. He's like Philip Rivers, from, well, dude. We didn't, we didn't say he only yeah. had one wife, so, I mean, it's not James impossible. James K. Polk, during his term, Polk secretly purchased a number of enslaved children for his Mississippi connotation plantations. Oh, so he was down with child labor yeah, and slavery? Oh, yeah, yeah. He is not the official oh, president. Oh, come on, man. He got a terrible fact. James, what are we doing? He was like, well, my favorite color is purple, though. What co- what number president he was? Polk was 11. Boof, oh, 11. Oh, he was earlier than That's I that thought. Wednesday. It's a bad yeah, year. 1845. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is else there anything interesting here? about Lincoln that we didn't know? Um, the only thing I think this listed was talking about how he probably had Marfan syndrome, which I feel like most people know. Yeah, we knew that. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Who was the guy that was in a tub? Taft, William Taft, oh, the Taft fattest was president. A, he, yeah, he was a tubby dude. He was the fattest oh, yeah, president. He was the he fat was guy. Husky. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Johnson, though one of the few presidents without a pet, Johnson apparently cared for a family of White House mice, which he called the Little Fellows. The three blind mice. Creep. <laughs> ew, why would you have ew? Creepy guy. Uh, let's see here. Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah, let us know when you get to our boy, uh, dude. Civil War general was invited to join Abraham Lincoln at Ford's Theater on the night that he was assassinated, but was forced to decline after his wife made plans to visit their children in New Jersey. She classic saved, wife. She saved his life. His life yeah, dude. classic. Uh, classic know, wife. You think, wife you're gonna hang, you think you're going out with the boys? Not Good tonight. Excuse. Well, she saved him. Yeah. Rutherford B. Hayes was the first president to have a telephone. Hmm. That's not that's not that he did. Yeah, that's just not like cool. That's just changing of the times. The time. yeah. Good for him. He was See, this alive. is how I know that the 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 History Channel are cowards because we're at James A. Garfield, which he talks about extensively last week. But the fun fact is not that he had a bunch of whiskey and stew shoved up his ass. It was just that he was the first like left-handed <laughs> president. Lame. Um, that's corny as hell. Are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. Oh. I drink left-handed. That's I drive maybe... left-handed. I pee left-handed. So you're ambidextrous. No. There's a lot of things I cannot do left-handed. 
I can play drums like I'm left-handed, actually. But You just named four things in the span of a minute, what you can do lefty, but you're not ambidextrous. I can't write left-handed. I can't cut with my left hand. Like, I can't hold a knife. I cut with my left, but I I can throw a right-handed. football okay with my left hand, actually. Yeah. I can throw a tight spiral. Yeah. I can't really throw far. I but... saw that shit when you had your fucked up thumb. You were yeah. doing it with the left hand. Benjamin Harrison, first president to hire a female White House staffer. All right. Woke, what woke year Benjamin was that? Harrison, eighteen eighty nine. Oh, he was born before in suffrage, before Damn. women's rights. He was he was progressive. Did they kill her? <laughs> I don't know. Damn. William McKinley uh, appeared on the five hundred dollar bill, which was discontinued in nineteen sixty nine. I have no idea there ever was a five hundred dollar bill. That's bullshit. They should bring that thing back. Uh, William Howard Taft, famous for his corpulence, Taft was the first president to hurl a ceremonial first pitch in a Major League Baseball game. A little sports connection there. The fat guy there. threw the first pitch? Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's like a shot put, man. He's got plenty Had of weight be. behind it. They said he hurled it. <laughs> uh, Woodrow Wilson oh, you're getting established to our boy. Mother's Day as a, as a holiday. Okay. He liked shout his mom. out to the mothers. Yeah, I'd be shout curious out mom. if his mom was still alive because that would just be a cop out of him just being like, "Shit, I never did anything with my mom anyway." Oh, well, here we're on our boy Warren G. Harding. This is a fun Does one. It here talk we go. About how much of a degenerate he was? Well, a little bit. It says okay. prior prior to taking office, Hart, uh, Harding wrote a series of lurid love letters to his mistress, the wife of one of his best friends. Oh yeah, oh, he had nice. mad Damn. mistresses. A lurid he love was, uh, letter. What a dog. On Valentine's Day, no less. Yeah, yeah shout yeah, out Warren a, G. Harding. Yeah, dude. shout out Warren G. Harding, pimping a player and a, and a dog he also was a degenerate yeah he loved to drink and loved to smoke right it says it in here then to sleep with his friends wives which is also kind of cool i guess in a yeah, way it seems like an all-around cool guy a true president to be honest presidential deeds right there this is something i didn't know harry s truman the s does not stand for anything it's just an s what huh apparently the same is true for ulysses s grant that's is some there, hipster, is there a this period made up cold, as dude. middle initial is there a period next to it? Yeah. That makes sense. You get, get to... Uh, <laughs> no, it does, because then it's just yes, or S, period. Dwight D. Eisenhower is the first president to ride in a helicopter. Meh. It's what? just being alive, dude. That's not that cool. Again, technology catches yeah. up. Uh, first was... president to use a smartphone. Lame. You didn't fuck your friend's oh, wife. <laughs> John F. Kennedy was employed, <laughs> briefly employed as a journalist during uh, the waning weeks of World War II. I knew that. Lame. Not the most interesting thing. John F. Kennedy mainly. Is there met. anything else really interesting? JFK got a blowjob from, uh, what's it called? Uh, from uh, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. yeah. So. That's kind of cool. Monica Lewinsky, my ass. Dude. No one can beat that shit. I feel like most people probably know this, but Gerald Ford uh, turned down offers from the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers. As a player? Yeah, he was a big a, dude, yeah. Yeah, he was a star football player at University of Michigan. Yeah, Jimmy, he's a big dude, Jimmy yeah. Carter, the peanut farmer? Jimmy Carter. No, that's George Washington. Wait, Carter. This what is, are you talking no, it's about? Not. Jimmy Carter was a peanut <laughs> farmer. Look it up. It says right here, actually. When, when his father died in 1953, Carter gave up his successful military career to move back to Georgia. Is he and still work alive? On their par- family's peanut farm. Yeah, it's funny you say that because, dude, that guy's been in hospice you care. You can't kill that man. Jimmy Carter has been in hospice been in for hospice. like a year. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's insane. I remember thinking he was going to die months ago. You dude, know what yeah, kept Jimmy, him alive? The fucking peanuts. Yeah, the peanuts. Yeah, 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 so. That's why they said they didn't like him. Jimmy, Jimmy Carter like, kind of had was a pretty sly dude because... Everyone loves Jimmy Carter now because of the Habitat for Humanity thing where he, like, builds the houses. Mm-hmm. But he was a pretty shitty president. Like, he only had one counts. term. Yeah. yeah, he was not very good. He was soft. A lot of, uh, yeah, well, you know. the Democrat, he, he was a Democrat. But he kind of, like, he, set the stage for Reaganism, you know. Exactly, because he, like, he was so soft. Yeah, and started, uh, you know, scaling back uh, the social safety net and stuff. But now, like, people think of him as this great humanitarian because he, like picks up a hammer and for like a, a, a photo or whatever but whatever I, mean, I won't shit on him that much he's like on the verge of death well he's been on, <laughs> he's been on the verge of death for like forever now so i, I think don't he's know. done I enough he's... good though to offset the potential bad but he also didn't have a good he should never have been a politician that way he's too you know what i mean he's he didn't soft get, he didn't get pulled anyway he's been soft Let's see we're getting towards the end here george bush which uh, one the first the first one well actually this is this is true of both of them was a uh, a member of Skull and Bones, an elite secret society at Yale University. That that shit's kind of wild if you're into the uh, you know sort of like Illuminati. So they were in a kind frat. Of they were just in a frat. No, this is like beyond a frat. This is like secret society, like crazy shit. Like apparently, this is <laughs> allegedly. 
cannot confirm or deny, but allegedly part of the initiation process for being in Skull and Bones is that you have to lie in a coffin and jack off in what? front of a bunch of other people. And apparent and, and apparently, in front of people? And apparent yeah. And you're supposed to like recount your like sexual exploits or whatever. And apparently when George W. Bush did this, his father was present during the in- initiation. Oh, no. So George W. Bush, oh, according, no. according to legend, lied in a coughing and jacked off in front of his dad. That's horrible. Damn. Jeb was just jerking off in the corner and trying to be involved. <laughs> yeah, Jeb wasn't Jeb, cool I don't enough. know. If, yeah, I don't know if he. I, they probably all went to Yale. I don't know. I don't know if Jeb was in Skull and Bones. He probably was. I feel like Jeb is the uh, what do you call it? The redheaded stepchild. Yeah. No disrespect. Jeb Trevor. went to like Princeton and just started jerking off. They were like, "Does this count?" He's like, "No, this does not count." Like, yeah. oh, all right. It's like, dude, you're at the wrong school, bro. Yeah, the rest of these are kind of boring. I mean, we all know about what's the, Trump. Uh. What did they have? Uh, before becoming president, Trump was a real estate developer, oh, entrepreneur. Everything, they can't really have a fun fact about Donald Trump. Everyone already knows everything about him. That's true. Joe Biden. This is does I see. This, see, this is kind of like propaganda here because this is what people <laughs> say. Joe Biden be, overbecame a debilitating childhood stutter after enduring bullying and uh, over the condition in grade school, which is now the excuse that everyone gives for whenever he just. Like He's just old. His brain shuts off during yeah. his speech and whatever. It's like everyone. All this is def- bullying. All his defenders are like, he has a stutter and you shouldn't make fun of his stutter. It's like, motherfucker, this guy's brain has turned the He's pudding. He's 81. <laughs> like, yeah. This guy, is, his brain is gone. He's Jesus. 81 years old. This is yeah, not right. Yeah, they got to right. get some better dirt on him. Yeah. They could have thrown some Hunter Biden nuggets in there. Yeah, they got to get Kamala in there. Dude, did you guys actually, there was this picture of... Uh, a young Kamala going around of like, I don't know. She must've been like in her thirties or something, but she has short hair and looked exactly like Pat Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like this similar like haircut. Are they trying to say, are you trying first, to say all light skinned people look the first, same no, dude? But, but at first I was looking, I was looking at this, controversy. At first here. I'm looking at this picture and I was like, damn, Kamala used to be kind of a baddie, man. But then, People Whoa, started, but then so people like started, Holmes but then people started pointing out the the how it looks like Pat Mahomes. I was like, oh shit, she does got like, a little like, bit, fuck, fuck, fuck. I think a little bit like like Pat Mahomes. I'm gonna Google it right yeah, now. Yeah, Google the young Kamala picture. Damn. Well, those are some good fun facts. Yeah. Or facts, not fun facts. Well, Avery's it. looking that up. Uh, I guess we're just gonna about to wrap up here. Yeah. Please leave us a five star ring and a review every major podcast. Give us a follow. On Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, subscribe on oh God. YouTube. Yeah, she, you see does the picture? Look, he, she looks like my home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like that's what, that wasn't the picture I was thinking. Oh. Of. There was a better, there was a, a cooler picture. But he said she's like a baddie over here. I'm like, that's she's in a. Fo- I think that's the one I was thinking she's of. She's kind of cute, but she yeah. does look a lot like Mahomes. Yeah, Knowing bit. that going into it, it throws off the. She whole- should be the one running for president at this point. Honestly, people aren't going to vote for her. Yeah. Well, but, that's I mean, why you just got to hope that least, he wins it and then he dies she, and then she whenever, just takes over. Like, yeah, whenever she speaks in public, she kind of sounds like she's like been been dr- yeah, dangerous. She sounds like she's been <laughs> on a bent, <laughs> yeah. two week long bender. But I'll take that over the guy who. Doesn't know where he is. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She at know? least sounds like she talks. That's right. We're doing this right now. Like she has such a yeah. big pause in her words that it's a little. Odd, she just but... starts rambling on some some weird shit. Oh, yes. Big hands. But uh, the Democratic yeah. Party, everyone. Yeah. If you have a better idea of who should run for president, then why don't you send us an email at citywidepod at gmail And from all of us here at the Citywide, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Peace. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>